Hello everyone. Welcome to this short introduction to some of the major global environmental challenges that we face today. I would like to highlight a few of the core issues that make global environmental politics and finding global in conjunction with local solutions so important. We face tremendous challenges. The COVID-19 crisis highlighted how health, the relationship between humans and nature and the economy are global problems. We all are highly interdependent and cannot shield ourselves off the rest of the world. The European Environmental Agency identified in 2015 11 so-called megatrends, with which not only the European Union, but the entire world is confronted. These megatrends set the context in which we organize our society and economy, and in which we try to find policy solutions. The megatrends go beyond the environment. World population has risen significantly. More and more people live in cities. Diseases spread globally. New technology is being developed ever faster and digitalization is changing our lives. Our current economic model is not sustainable and we need to move to less, less polluting and more circular models. New powers are rising, which changes international politics beyond the Western liberal order of past decades. Growing populations and prosperity have led to ever more resource use in our current linear economic model. This also has led to ever more pressure on nature and ecosystems. Climate change has already had effects on the planet that are difficult, if not impossible, to reverse. Pollution of the environment still continues. All of those trends that have unfolded over recent years and decades pose massive challenges for governance and policy. How can governments, companies and citizens cope with and address the tremendous challenges that we face? In this course, we try to understand why this is so difficult, but we will also discuss some solutions. Let's delve into just a few of these trends. One of the global megatrends is a growing world population. Since the early 19th century, global population has soared, in particular since the 1950s. The United Nations predict a continued growth of world population to at least 9.5 billion in 2100, from about 2.5 billion in 1950. While some other studies come to somewhat different results, also their predictions for 2100 are significantly higher than 1915's level and at least 7 billion. Living on this planet with more and more people means that if we don't change our consumption patterns, we will use more and more resources, which is of course not sustainable. One crucial factor in terms of resource use is energy. With a growing world population, we use more and more energy. As you can see here, between 1994 and 2019, energy consumption from all sources increased, including oil, gas and coal. Using those fossil fuels means, of course, that greenhouse gases are emitted, which significantly contributes to climate change. As you can also see, oil, gas and coal still are the main energy sources globally. If we want to achieve the goal of net zero emissions in the second half of this century, we need to replace those sources with low carbon alternatives, reduce our energy consumption or capture the emissions. This is a massive challenge that involves technological innovation, large scale infrastructure investment and a fundamental change of not only production, but also consumption patterns. This illustrates how different megatrends are interrelated and environmental problems can only be addressed in conjunction with economic and societal changes. 
If we look at different countries and regions, we notice stark differences in terms of their energy use patterns. There are big differences in terms of energy use per capita. This already gives you a glimpse into the politics of addressing energy related problems. The question of what a fair solution would be is extremely important, but also very controversial in international negotiations. The growing world population did not only go hand in hand with increasing energy use, but also with the use of many more resources, such as water. Cities have grown and soon half of the global population will live in a city. We use more and more fertilizer. The number of cars and lorries on our streets has soared. These are but a few examples of developments over the past decades that explain why we face so many more environmental problems today than in the past. It is crucial that we address global environmental problems. Researchers from the Stockholm Resilience Institute calculated what they call planetary boundaries. This is the safe operating space for humanity. On some resources, we have already exceeded the planetary boundaries by far, mainly on biogeochemical flows and biodiversity. We will not be able to reverse to the state of how it was before. The ways in which we use land and have changed it for agriculture and other purposes is a critical area in which we are nearing the planetary boundary beyond which the change will not be reversible anymore. Climate change is yet another area in which we are not performing well. We're moving in the direction to change the planet in a way that makes it impossible to reverse to a state that can be considered a safe operating space for humans. We are thus facing a number of risks. Here you see the results of an annual survey by the World Economic Forum. They asked about 800 of their members about their risk perceptions and which risks they think are likely to occur and would cause great impact if they were to occur. Most of the risks that were perceived as highly likely and very imp impactful are environmental concerns. When looking at the risk perception over time, it is striking that until 2010, environmental risks were not mentioned, but that risks, risk perceptions have changed significantly. Environmental risks are deemed both likely and impactful, which highlights the urgency to address environmental problems. We face a number of complex and urgent challenges. The challenges are environmental, social and economic at the same time. Addressing the challenges requires fundamental transformation. The urgency of addressing environmental challenges is growing. And as we will see during the course, many of the current international solutions are not effective enough to address the problems. We'll try to understand why this is the case. 